video we'll talk about painting objects made from colored glass. I have three tips that I want to share with you and let's start with the first one right away. We need to make sure we actually have watercolors that will match the object colors. For my photo reference I think the best matches would be ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, burnt orange and undersea green in combination with sap green. As you know, with watercolors, not all shades can be mixed. So if you're missing that pigment, you would have to either buy it or paint something approximate. It will be much harder to paint them, especially for not super experienced painters. It might be hard to make that mental adjustment if you can't match the color exactly. I started the painting process with a precise drawing. This is an exercise in perspective. Still lives are great for studying perspective. And I started painting on dry paper because most of the edges that I see in the still life are hard edges. There are very few soft edges here. So I don't need water. I don't need paint to float. And I need fairly intense colors. So I thought starting on dry paper will be my best option. So my second tip for painting glass objects would be to start with object colors. Once you determined which pigments at least approximately you will need, what we need to do is distribute those colors and paint the middle tone, so the object color. I'm using a flat brush because it holds a lot of pigment. Like I said, I don't need a lot of water in my painting and I'm not mixing colors on the palette. I'm applying them on paper and if I'm switching to a different color I just blend them right there on the painting because mixing on the palette requires more water and uh, that would dilute my pigments and I want really intense colors here that I see in the reference. I really like the colors in the reference. I like the perspective. Those glasses look very interesting. The only thing I don't like that they're kind of hanging in that white space and the photographer either edited the shadow out or it's behind the glasses and we don't see it. I think it was edited. Uh, so I'll have to do something about that. We'll, we'll figure it out in just a minute. But now let's just continue distributing our colors. You see that I'm using actually three pigments for the green glass in front. Besides undersea green, I added lemon yellow to show the light there in the center of the glass. And I also added that sap green that I planned from the beginning and that I see in the glass as well. So undersea green will be for darker areas. For the orange glass in the middle, besides burnt orange by Daniel Smith, I am using new gamboge because where the light hits it there on the left side, it's a lot lighter. It's that kind of sunny amber color. So I needed some yellow for that. As usual, when we paint glass, I have a couple more tutorials on glass and on crystal. We're looking for shapes. There are a lot of surfaces in those glasses that reflect light. So geometry might be a little tricky to understand. That's why we go by shape and we paint them as precisely as possible. Like I said, this is a great exercise. If you want to get better in painting objects in perspective, landscapes, orbitscapes are a lot of fun, but it's a lot harder. So to learn perspective, my recommendation would be to definitely start with still lives. All right, this is my first layer. I let it dry. Before I started adding darker shapes in my painting, I actually picked up paint in some spots with a synthetic flat brush because it was hard for me from the beginning to make that gradation between light mid-tones and mid-tones. It's a very easy to pick up the color. I actually applied a layer of Lift Aid by Quar on my paper before I started painting. But even if you didn't do that, using a slightly stiffer brush, some clean water and a paper towel, you shouldn't have a problem lifting paint and creating those lighter areas. Let's start deepening color in the blue glass. Like I said, even though I had very accurate drawing after I started applying paint, it's much harder for me to see that drawing. So I have to pay attention to correct perspective and kind of draw with the brush. So it's good exercise, not just in perspective drawing, but also good practice in controlling your brush and handling your brush. 
I love painting a lot of flowers, but they don't require as much precision as geometric objects like these glasses. Working on that blue glass, the second layer is a process of creating darker shapes, but also creating lighter shapes. So I'm immediately creating that form and I am intensifying all the colors. I'm going to do the same thing for my amber glass and to create shadows there I need to neutralize burnt orange. The complement of orange is blue so I'm neutralizing it with that same blue that I used for the glass, for the blue glass. And here is a good example that even if we have an accurate drawing it's not enough. We need to constantly pay attention to perspective because my amber glass started to get distorted. I painted that rim on the right side a little too high so I will need to make correction when painting and get it back on track again. To paint the color where the two glasses overlap each other, I'm doing exactly that. I'm using a mixture of, of two object colors of orange and blue because that's basically what we see, a mixture of these two colors. So we don't have to invent something different. We can just mix orange and blue and paint that shape where they overlap. This is, will be one of the few places where we have soft edge. So I'm kind of softening my brush strokes inside the amber glass and the rest of the edges look pretty hard to me. I don't see any more soft edges. There will be a little bit softer edge inside that green glass, but otherwise all the edges are going to be hard. That's what will create the design on the glasses. And of course the outlines are pretty hard. So just trying to copy all the shapes that I see in the reference photo. I think as artists we are fascinated with uh, painting glass, color glass or transparent crystal just because it looks very complex but if you get all these shapes right the painting can look very striking and very attractive to viewers. It's not a fast process because we need precision but I think the results are well worth it and you will see mine in just a minute and you can let me know in comments if you think it was worth a couple of hours of effort to paint this. And here's my third tip that I wanted to share you. I thought about it as I was painting these glasses. Painting color glass is somewhat different from painting transparent glass. If we look at black and white photo of this composition, I as usual printed it out and I put it in front of me. I thought it will be a very good useful reference for me, but actually I couldn't really use it because tone wise all the tonal relationships were very close to each other. So there wasn't as much contrast between light and shadow as we see in transparent glass or as we see in crystal. So here I think when painting color glass it's much more useful to just look at the color version of our reference if we're painting from a photo and try to replicate all those different shapes and their color right away instead of using black and white reference because black and white reference doesn't give us that much information. It's useful to take a look at it but it's not as useful as when we paint transparent glass. The darker shapes on the green glass and the sea green I think is the best option so that's what I'm using and for slightly lighter shapes I'm going back to sap green and intensifying a color there to create slightly darker areas. Again paying careful attention to perspective and to the structure of the glass to make sure it's not falling, it's not distorted. So this is great exercise in perspective. Like I said in the beginning, I love the reference photo, but I didn't like those glasses hanging in white space and I think it looks weird on my paper as well. So I did a little more research and I looked at some more photos. I looked at how color glass casts shadows. And as you see, those shadows, they have color in the middle and then kind of towards the edges and further away from the object, they become neutral. So what I did, I dragged some color out of the amber and the blue glass. And then I added just a little bit of indigo, kind of nice neutral blue color 
to neutralize that shadow and make it more realistic. Lots of water, big flat brush, and actually just a few brush strokes were quite enough. It's important not to overwork the shadows, not to make them too heavy. And of course that messed up the bottom edge of my glasses, but it's no big deal. I think it actually looks nice and watercolory down there. And I can always let this dry and come back in and sharpen that edge. Just go over it one more time. I then continued working on the green glass. It was kind of underdeveloped. I found a few more shapes in it using lemon yellow to give it that warm glow that we see in the reference photo. And I also added some new gamboge to the amber glass. The upper edge of it looks very warm. And you see, after I added a little bit of yellow, it started really glowing. My final touches were done with a dagger brush. I needed precision. I needed to paint even more of those dark shapes. I'm using neutral mixture of orange and blue for those dark shapes on the amber glass. I worked on the bottom edge, of course, where the cast shadows that I painted are now dry. With watercolor, as usual, it's important to pay attention, especially to the areas where two objects intersect. When we change color, we tend to kind of not pay attention and lose precision a little bit. So I make a point at the end of the painting process to go over those areas and make sure they're painted precisely and that those little areas where two colors are next to each other are painted correctly. This all contributes to the realistic effect of the painting. And as you notice, the glasses, when they turn, the tone lightens. There is like a whitish cast on them from the light, kind of light skims that surface. And then we see the thickness of the glass. So when we paint round objects, we usually lighten color towards the edges. But here with glass, with this color glass object, and I think it's true for transparent glass as well, there is a dark edge actually because we see the thickness of that glass so careful observation as usual is very important don't just assume things we need to know the theory but we can't assume things we need to observe our subject very carefully and i thought i won't need any opaque white these glasses don't have pronounced highlights that's another interesting thing because transparent glass and crystal have super bright highlights always and the highlights play a huge role in creating the illusion of glass and uh, defining those shapes these glasses are kind of matte and they're not super shiny but then I kind of saw a few highlights in them in a few spots. And I also might need to lighten those edges that are turning away from us. I did try to lift color there and to make them lighter, but I think opaque white will help me even more to achieve that effect. So very small, not super pronounced highlights in a few spots, a few adjustments using white ink. And I also try to vary the highlight on the bottom there, that curved highlight. I try to vary it by glass. So on the blue one, it's going to be the least pronounced. It will be slightly more pronounced on the amber glass in the middle and the green glass. In the photo, it's kind of blurry a little bit, but we're not doing that in our painting because we're not copying the photo. We're just using it for reference. So I made that highlight on the green glass the most pronounced. So it will push forward and look realistic and white can also be used since the background is white we can use white ink to correct the outside edges of the glasses if your brush slipped a little bit and you painted too much or maybe perspective is not quite there just use white ink and make a correction all right it was a long process but my painting is done i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you will try painting some color glass objects there are a lot of fun if slightly different from transparent glass and crystal i left you the links to the other two tutorials in the description under this video and also in the cards at the end of it thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one here on tamirop studios channel Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!